Uh, hello everyone, greetings from National Skills Network Hyderabad. Uh, we are very happy to inform you that today we have the Vice Chancellor of C.V. Raman Global University, Bhuvaneshwar Orissa with us for a very interesting chat about how this university is very uniquely placed in terms of combining a skills, vocational education and training with higher education which is, I think, uh, very, very much lacking in most of the uh, courses that we offer in India. So it's very interesting and encouraging to see universities uh, who are setting new benchmarks and uh, doing many innovative programs with industry participation. Uh, let's learn more from Professor B.S. Satyanarayana. I welcome you to this uh, uh, talk, sir. So let's get started by asking you. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. So let's get started by asking you a very pertinent question about your university. How is it that you are combining, uh, you know, employability, entrepreneurship and education together with so many programs that you offer from uh, C.V. Raman Global University? Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on this National Skills Network. I think if if there was any time when we needed to seriously look at seamlessly integrating knowledge, skill, experiential learning, and their integrated learning leading to competence, and from their competence to employability, research, innovation, product development, to entrepreneurship, maybe this is the time. We are in one of the most exciting times as far as education is concerned, because innovation is happening in every domain. Knowledge life cycles have reduced very fast. Earlier, if steel was discovered, it took 200 to 300 years before steel industry became prominent. Silicon took about 70 years, but then carbon have my nanotube happened in 1991, but by 2020 already it was, I mean, a few billion dollars industry. So the pace of change is lightening. Knowledge life cycles are reducing and product life cycles are even shorter. And therefore, if we cannot seamlessly integrate knowledge and skill and with a very good foundation right from school, I mean, it cannot happen in thin air, mid air. I mean, somewhere at the bachelor or master's level, but it has to start from the ground level. I think this is maybe the right time because you know, the new education policy 2020 has come up. And because you asked about C.V. Uh, Raman Global University, I'm happy to say it's a great vision that see, the president of the university, when he even set up the university, he started with skilling. Maybe at that time it was communication. I mean, just come English, because finally, I mean, whatever I do, if I do not have the skill to communicate coherently, effectively, and in a cogent fashion, what I'm aware of, whatever my domain, I mean, I'm useless. So that was part of a problem because most people, students come from rural background or poorer economic background. And anyway, English is not our native language. I mean, it's a, <laughs> yes, today it is in our uh, constitution has given it a place. And of course, maybe we are one of the largest English speaking uh, <laughs> nation in the world, even though it is not a formal language. But at the same time, communication is a key. So started off as a communication aspect, then uh, to other experiential learning, I mean, skilling in technical domains. And so therefore, it was found that employability in this age with engineering as an enabler for everything, therefore, skill related engineering program was started. And when it was started, it was clearly understood within the first 10 years that the curriculum is outdated. The whole world is looking at something new. So therefore, with a vision, the president said, now how do we start creating infrastructure, working with industry for future skills? So right. that at least, I mean, students who are coming into academic process, the minimal interested students can be excited to get into future skills and that would make them viable for changing dynamics of industry needs or changing dynamics of innovation. So future skill, about 25 odd centers with about 30, 40 crores of investment in terms of infrastructure place and with best of companies, national and international were created. But somehow, even this, because in this country, we had somehow made that degree as more aspirational, whereas vocational skills were sort of, even now, I mean, the mental makeup is to think of it as second class. Mm -hmm. But then people don't understand that if a surgeon I mean, has to, I mean, do a surgery. I mean, even if in a heart valve, he is cutting a small, I mean, a few millimeters of vein with a five centimeter scalpel. But then everybody cannot do that. 
he has to be a surgeon with a huge years of research i mean practice competence skill knowledge all together knowledge and skill seamlessly integrated with competence over a period and with expertise to identify and then he has to do i mean i cannot say anybody given a blade can cut a vein and then therefore i mean what is so great about it so that means it needs huge amount of integrated capability and that was clearly visualized by the university skill centers were started but somewhere the faculty orientation was needed so now we have used the new education policy as a bulwark mm -hmm. so how do we leverage it to create a seamless structure between education skilling and also i mean make sure that there is a i mean value added to because if innovation or product development has to happen so we have said every student whether he is doing agriculture engineering medical pharma they will have to take to some amount of skills they will have to mandatorily have i mean other personal because you say when you talk of skills also i mean say we are talking of i mean one is a, a core i mean foundational skills and then we are talking of competencies in terms of various domain competent numerical competency and other things and then we are talking of character qualities Right. All of these skills have to embed together for me to be effective, whether I'm a salesman, whether I'm a manager, whether I'm an entrepreneur. So we said, how do we combine all of them? And even more important, therefore, mandatorily integrated them, saying in the very first year of a course, everybody, even a civil engineer or a doctor or an agriculture would equally learn, learn about computer programming. They will learn about some of this. You know, we have introduced a course on system and design thinking and then said, practically, you will have to do something. And that leverage the skill lab and do something and bring all this knowledge together. And that's on one side. And the other is to look at society at large. We have said now as a university, we are creating various skills, we have created lifelong learning provision so that people can get trained partly online, but online is not good enough. And there are too many fly-by-night operators. So everything, we need to deliver quality hands-on. See, I cannot be an aircraft pilot or I cannot say I'm going to swim by simply learning it on paper. I need to still jump into the water to be swimming and again jumping into a well, jumping into a pond, jumping into a river, in a lake and an ocean swimming is an entirely different ball game. So people have to understand that skill and competence along with knowledge. Yes, of course, Akio Murata visualized a whole Walkman in his mind when, when there was no injection molding, there were no plastics, there were no uh, finer tapes. But then finally, it had to be practically implemented. So you need design, development, machine, and system. So knowledge and skill have to seamlessly integrate with experiential learning. The experiential learning should develop competence and the confidence to look at now beyond in terms of innovation. So the university curriculum has been formulated in that fashion. And plus, the best part is we have now introduced many skill courses. We are training from school dropouts under say Deen Dayal Upadhyay uh, program or even various other programs uh, to ITI to diploma people. And also in the university curriculum, leveraging the new NEP, we are trying to build in, I mean, bringing in the benefits of academic bank of credits, I mean, ABC, and also seeing giving credits for this so that I could, if I'm from a poor family and I have no ability to go to a college, I start off from the school. Therefore, the foundation of the school is very critical. I do a skilling program and I get into a job. As I am moving up in the job, my skills, I build it through, say, CGU. I mean, so that I can integrate them more easily. So I could, at every stage, build some skill competence, do partly theory, and then come back, depending on my availability, 10, 15 days, practice it, or even link it to my project activity in my company. And then so that grow. And these credits can then be linked to higher degrees. So I could literally go up to the PhD as envisaged, both by the National Vocational Skill Framework and by the new education policy. The framework is not very clear in the higher education, but we have created a process for it. So I think we have taken ahead of the curve, yeah. starting with the first the vision of the president to create futuristic skill infrastructure with multiple cores with about 25 odd companies for the all the 25 skills that are typically played up in the world skill contest but then also created infrastructure to train from ITA and all that so even they could I mean just sorry to add for example Korea in 2017 came up with an education policy said employment first education next because they realized that the knowledge uh, base of change is great they had 100 percent I mean, uh, graduate enrollment ratio, but they were not ready to come and work in the job and they were not getting people to work in their factories. Those then suddenly they were becoming irrelevant or becoming frustrated. So they said, you get into a job, start learning things that you like, 
related to the job, either translation to a new domain or in the same domain, you go vertically up. So we have looked at both things and looked at national education policy and created an integrated framework of knowledge and skill with advanced centers and seeing that how the, and created processes where anybody, whether an academic student would have to mandatorily take up skill courses, use it to product and process de design development to clearly understand that knowledge and skill go together. Or if by chance life did not give me the huge opportunity and I'm just, I mean, had to drop out from school with my skill or just pass the school, get a skill and get into a job, even then how do we integrate my life career growth at my own affordable pace and cost and still go to any level or transform. We have created such an integrated structure as envisaged by national education policy. Hopefully I've said something yes. which is <laughs> clear. Yes, yes, you did. And there are several points which you just you know told us about. I would like to just quickly summarize uh, before we move ahead. I think you brought out the importance of um, you know, skilling in a larger context while you said you are also connecting it with the NEP 2020. But at the same time, the examples you gave were so very relevant about a surgeon or about, uh, uh, let's say, a pilot or somebody who has been hands on. I think all these are pointers that uh, manual work and work with, with which we do with our hands is equally as challenging as any other. other Very work. critical. Yeah. Very, very yes. And at the same time, I think uh, what is happening at the back end when you're talking about this is uh, the excellent kind of a um, partnership that you have with various industries. So now we would like to know more about how did you manage this partnership and the centers of excellence that you have in your university? Maybe you can tell us a bit about this as well. Yeah. I mean, see, uh, it's a no-brainer. Today, see, multiple surveys have clearly said any company with even seven to eight people or 10 people, 70% yeah. of them say they don't get competent people. I mean, whether it's an administrative service industry or whether it is, I mean, a job or a, a, a telecaller's job or whether it is an advanced, I mean, a VLSI fabrication system or a design or whether it is, I mean, a medical instrumentation to aerospace. Everywhere yeah. there is shortage of skilled person. And on the other side, we say we are already, I mean, we have 300 million children in school and college. And the ISHA report 2020 clearly says about close to 30 million are in higher education. Yeah. And we have 600 million in the age group of 15 to 35 who will all be looking at some form of educa higher education or mm -hmm. skilling and competence building because the digitalization is causing a change. And for all of this, so everybody needs today, I mean, for example, a report that has come from, I mean, say the World Economic Forum in January, February says 92% of all employed people say they would need additional education for survival or transition. And 88% of people who are in need of continuous formal education. So, Therefore, whether it is an industry, whether it is a government, whether it is a university, all of us need to come together to enable for this transition, whether it's a regular program or a skilling program. And so looking at future skills and looking at this need. So we were, I mean, as I said, part of the vision and also we went out of the way to speak to industries. And so having spoken to multiple industries across the uh, board, and we were able to get about 25 companies across the board to come on board. And these companies have set up, I mean, uh, the activities are again a wide range of activity. I mean, anything from, uh, I mean, welding, hyper to, I mean, say drilling, milling, cutting, to high performance uh, computing, to cyber security, to water uh, technology. I mean, say for example, an instrumentation company, uh, we have a, say, a, a companies working on instrumentation, mechatronics, automation. So it may look as if duplication, but at the same time, we have uh, Festo, we have Bosch Extract, we have Siemen, we have Schneider. So all of them with a different one on focusing on IoT and electrical power requirement, one on manufacturing capability, one on automation swayers. I mean, uh, uh, what is uh, the, you mean? the pneumatic and hydraulic valves, whereas other is looking at all sorts of instrumentation. So for example, all this enabled, say one of our students to win I mean, uh, say the water technology contest or not, not that we want to claim here, but say last week we had the Odisha skill development uh, con skill contest happening. And I'm happy to say 38 students from CV Raman have won various awards. I mean, a gold, well, first, second, third. So I think that's a huge 
I mean, uh, transition and the, well, we have leveraged every one of this, as I said, the companies uh, from uh, Cisco to TCS to, uh, I mean, this, uh, TCS, we are on side, we are working on uh, high performance computing uh, uh, creation because not many people know that, say, five, seven years back, world's fourth largest fastest computer was created by TCA, Tata Group's CRL. Of course, now they have closed that company because Indian country market did not need high performance computing. They said that whatever is installed itself is only utilized 10%. But at the same time, it means it doesn't mean we are simply working just for the name, but they are a leading capable company in high performance computing when we have, or we have with Cisco some network requirement. So all these major companies, national and international, we have created labs. People have been trained and with the state and the best part is they not only train somebody to get skilled and understand fundamental but they all can be used and that knowledge can be used for design and development of product process and solution mm. so we are very happy and then we are again expanding the scope because we are now doing consultancy and projects through our say uh, tool room center we are doing products for aerospace and defense yeah. From ISRO to other, we are actually manufacturing components. So a student who comes in not only gets skilled in welding, drilling, milling, cutting, when he's doing a skilling component, but he's equally developing a real life component for a product or a process in an industry. Yeah. So I think this marriage of industry with some forevision and thought of creating futuristic skill has suddenly become very relevant. And we now integrating it seems sometimes the student goes for skilling, the teacher was not competent enough to even understand how to link it. So now we are creating, we have been one of the 40 plus institutions in the country selected by AACT to create an idea lab, ideation lab, I mean, AACT idea lab, which is essentially very, and we have introduced courses in system and design thinking and actual product or process making in the first year of a program. So they will go to this idea lab. And now we are saying every teacher is being made to relook at their fundamentals of first and second year engineering or medical or pharma or agriculture saying, how do you link all your multidisciplinary fundamentals so that you can use it for product and process. So give assignments and projects linked to, so that we can work even better with industry, whether it is an MSME or whether it's a multinational. So we could work with them and expand our scope to truly product process and innovation development besides just enabling employability or entrepreneur creation is how we are looking at it. Yeah, uh, one of the important points you mentioned just now was uh, the industry partnership, of course, but application of knowledge to solve a problem, I think it came out very strongly. I think here the teachers and the trainers role is absolutely essential because they are the pillars of the entire, you know, the, the structure, the, the structure of the university. So uh, how do you train them? How do you make them industry ready? And how do you also train them to uh, coach the students for competitions? Like we know the unique distinction you have of getting a gold medal for India uh, in the skills in the world skills competition. So could you please share uh, something that happens at the backdrop of what we see, you know, uh, from the university? Yeah. yeah, I think as you said, you could have the best best of systems, you could have the best of equipment and great motivated student, but that trainer or the guru or the teacher, I mean, that facilitator, if they are not motivated, nothing will work. Everything goes down the drain. You put it very, you hit the nail on the head when you said about teachers and trainers. So I think motivating them, orienting them or bringing a state, them to believe in this process is maybe the major I mean, enabler. And so we are, every faculty is mandatorily expected to be linked to at least a couple of skill labs. That was what we originally did. Now, what we are saying to the teacher is that, as we said, we have introduced in our curriculum, assignment, projects, project-based study, case study, and telling teachers to work in a multidisciplinary way. So for example, if we could simply, we are identifying say electrical mobility, water technology, and say waste management as three broad areas. So sociology to psychology, computation to management, mechanical to electrical, civil, all of them can see what is their functional aspect in it. Because everything has to go to either whether I'm doing waste management for water treatment or whether I'm doing advanced technology for clean water or whether I'm doing electrical mobility. And then saying bring assignments and projects with the system and design thinking and telling them that you see if you please work with the students encourage them to do the skill and from that skill add assignments and activity which they can also get excited about of an emerging area or a futuristic project 
And plus, if you get them to work, when say 60 students do a project, even a case study, or just saying how many electrical mobility vehicles are there, what are their parameters, you get to know what are the product, what are the parameter, which can, or what are the constraints. Next time you go into sub-module in your defined domain and do a next semester between core subjects, whether it is in communication for infotainment in electrical mobility, or whether it is <clears throat> the embedded system which will control the whole vehicle or whether it is i mean mechanical material structural design aspect for light weighting and or electrical energy for energy management so then see you get data for research you get what industry is doing so we have formulated a structure mm -hmm. for assignment projects and activity in such a way to meet the students area of interest on one side so that they get excited and they're able to link to their skill and give them some project-based activity but the outcomes are so designed that with that, the teacher can actually get data for taking up consultancy with local MSME or with a big company. And also somewhere among the 20, 60 students in my class, if five or six are very keen, I do advanced activity with them. Besides the final year projects and the master's student projects or PhD. So we are saying, how do we now with, again, sorry to repeat it, with the system or a design thinking overview, link every app. For, so create a stake for the teacher that say, when you enable skilling, you are also enabling yourself with research without even going out of the class. And you're exciting the student to work to a futuristic process. And therefore, I mean, without clicking a button, when you give them an assignment to look at all the patents in say a particular domain. So you have got so much patent and students own new idea. Now work with the student for doing next level because he's in the first and second year. He's under two to three years with you. You don't even need a PhD student or a master's student. So we are creating a system-based orientation. We're showing win-win for both the trainer to be trained and train their faculty students and motivate to work towards them. And equally, the outcomes are again win-win. So uh, in both ways, and as we said, for example, we are saying it cannot be just skilling for the contest, but excite them to go beyond for mentoring them for lifelong opportunities of innovation, research, entrepreneurship, product development, and saying these are so this is how it has to go. And then you, you find your own out of the whole class of say 2000 students. If you can find even five students to work with you, that's a great yes. transition. And so it a stake or a benefit for faculty and the trainers is something we are trying to bring on board so that it becomes their own interest to engage in it rather than saying this is an additional drudgery I have to do, which doesn't have any, because they already have enough job. Yes. That's also a reality because teachers are expected to do so many things. So yes. we are making it worthwhile for them to engage in that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very important point, uh, sir, because in my previous interactions with a lot of faculty members, one of the points which usually comes is the moment we tell them to take something more as a responsibility, we get to understand that they already are doing so many things and any additional thing becomes a very big, uh, I, would, I don't want to use the word, but a burden kind of a thing for them. But uh, when you put it in the right way with the right yeah. of incentives and things, I'm sure it works well. Uh, now, uh, coming towards the uh, closure of this conversation, I have a very important question for you. Uh, the new NEP 2020 has laid so much of emphasis on uh, vocationalization of school education and, the, and now both the ministries, that is the skill development ministry and the education ministry working very Much. closely. Uh, what is your view about uh, this entire, you know, the changes that are coming up and what would be your advice, let's say to students most importantly in this backdrop, because I think they should be able to understand why certain changes are happening in the big picture perspective of the country. Yeah. No, I think this is a great question because everyone from parent to student to faculty all have to understand that this is a great transformation. Right. I mean, it is uh, maybe it should have even happened 10 years back, but uh, better late than never. But this is the best opportunity. As I said in the very beginning, if one, this is maybe one of the best time to be in education because so much of innovation is happening. And to do any innovation, all innovations are not in any space. When you look at the skills, you see they are all multidisciplinary skills. It doesn't talk of any subject domain. Mm -hmm. When you look at product and emerging area, I mean, of uh, next uh, 10 years, they will say robotics. They will say, I mean, uh, clean energy. They will talk about, I mean, um, uh, IoT. So now it doesn't say physics, chemistry, maths. Mm -hmm. Everything is multidisciplinary. And when multidisciplinary activities are happening, the key thing we need to understand is that we need to be strong in our foundation. Mm. Again, sorry to give examples. Uh, for example, I went to Cambridge to do a PhD. 
I mean, I had already worked on clean energy. I had worked on large area flexible electronics. I had worked on instrumentation, process equipments, things like that. Suddenly, I go to Cambridge, and my I have my proposal was to do multi-layered uh, optoelectronic integrated circuits. I did not go to Jargon. But then he said, "No, I have just got an opportunity to start something new. Uh, why don't you get into it? It is interesting. It is called vacuum nanoelectronics. It is combining of the old valve electronics to modern electronics of semiconductor, small dimension." Again, I'll cut the story short. No theory exists, no equipments exist, no process exists, but we need to have the marriage of all the two domains. So I had to literally start with my school understanding or first plus two understanding of physics, chemistry, math, semiconductor physics to my maybe basic elementary foundations of my degree programs. But within two and a half years, we were able to create some product process. He could do a four million dollar project, or in the next five five years in Japan, I set up companies and we could do maybe another few hundred million dollars worth of activity. Though unfortunately, we are slightly ahead of the curve. The product is still not in the market because existing product capabilities expanded. But in principle, the technology was that if conventionally electron has to come out of a material, I have to do thermionic emission. I study in school heat. the element under vacuum electron will come out of the material now instead of that again some simple school physics that i had to understand was that whenever there is a sharp point and in a um, dry environment i test the sharp point i get a shock because charges accumulate so the philosophy that i had to now understand was that in that that sharp point if i put a higher electric field without even melting an electron under vacuum can escape into free space so what was originally done with electron heated up to say 1000 2000 1000 degree or 700 degree and coming out i could do at room temperature with a nano dimension mm. and with that i were able to de- de- develop an x ray source which could be handled pocket pa- machine or an electron light which could be burning with like conventional crt but more brighter than led so anyway the key point is so understanding fundamentals at the school getting a vocational education at the school level and be able to link theory to practice right is very critical so the new education policy partly calls for that so i think that's a very therefore the foundation in the school has to be well grounded and linked to experiential learning with the and plus it should give them the competence linked to their passion again with because their choice based credit is already there there are multiple options to take up this vocational courses it is not one shoe fit all everybody fitting into one but if people can do different and then if if at all they cannot study then they have a family requirement they get into a job but based on their passion they keep learning so i think the new education policy in that way is one of the best thing that could have happened and also we all know that today if i want to even do a plumbing i mean at least in india it is still very difficult but you get something at some cost but internationally they are very prohibitively expensive whether it's plumbing or electrical but then the same plumbing knowledge i can use it for refrigeration or developing a new uh, electronics whole circuit which can go into a body in in my body yeah. for managing my blood or infection so therefore this multidisciplinary approach understanding of fundamental and experiential learning and now mandating that you see you need to have even an engineering program without knowledge of maths or physics you could join the idea is if i know my school because increasingly more things are automated yeah. i only should know understand fundamentals and see how to use them yeah. once i know that at the click of a button or i can call an expert to do the advanced background but to create that opportunity i should have understanding and exp- that's why there's therefore they said engineering one can join without physics or mathematics but i should know that what is integration i don't need to do integration i might have failed in integration in the exam but as far as i know that when many many things are happening though all that information over large set of information has to be combined together i need integration or when many things are happening to find out what will be the smallest variation i need to do differentiation can i just understand that much and understanding functionality and fundamentals and ability to use them or call the appropriate expert when needed to use them or use an interface and say because see all numerical techniques at the click of a button i can now use it or get an expert to say what i should use and then i can know what are my variables so i think this new education policy giving this opportunity of once again i mean bringing value into skill yeah or at least 
trying to remove the stigma out of vocational education and asking us to integrate and that seamless transfer from skill to knowledge and knowledge to skill. Because suppose I'm doing something, suddenly I develop a new product, new process. I need to develop all the skill and competence for design, for manufacturability and design for yield. So therefore, I think it's a great opportunity, but main is teachers, as you said in the very beginning, have to open up their mind to appreciate the unique opportunity that it offers. And even more important, parents and students also should start working towards their passion of their area of interest, every domain. Whether I'm a disc jockey, whether I'm doing agriculture, whether I'm doing water management, whether I'm doing heart surgery, for everything there is just sustainable development and circular economy in every existing technology just to transition, there is so much trillions of dollars of opportunity. So it does not mean I have to completely reinvent something new. Can I shift to a more viable, sustainable process, material, devices, machine, automation? So it means if I understand my fundamentals in my school or plus two level, if I'm skilled, competent in at least a couple of skills, I can leverage it to go anywhere. Or similarly, if I have a degree and I've taken up some skill and if I'm serious, I can, whether I'm a doctor, whether I'm a mechanical engineer, I, I could be a mechanical engineer and do move towards developing a medical instrumentation. I could be an engineer and move towards music because my passion is music, but my parents forced me to computer science saying, how do I leverage because infotainment and enter, I mean, digital media is so huge. I can bring all my computation knowledge. So move towards that passion. And, but then the fundamentals have to be very strong. And that it, uh, everybody has an opportunity, whichever level they are, and they don't have to worry if they are willing to work. So this is an exciting opportunity that the new education policy gives us, whether I have to, for family reason, drop out or just pass school and get into a job, or whether I have, because my parents' compulsion become a doctor or an engineer, but still I have interest in agriculture or have interest in environment, I could leverage all this technology to do cutting edge innovation, application, service, or product in that domain. And that with the multidisciplinary choice-based credit provisions that gives into the system is very exciting. And therefore, and plus above all, now the government has already brought this 40%, I mean, using of MOOC. So if the school or the college doesn't have a competence or the university doesn't have a competence, you can actually take 40% credit from elsewhere. And if it with a proper mentor, it can be linked to what they want to do. As I said, I could be in an engineering college, but I could literally do a medical instrumentation or I could literally do something for agriculture, depending on what is the requirement. So those are the exciting prospects of new education policy, which I think is great, but it calls for a complete change of mindset and opening up of our mindset to willing to learn First of all, understand fundamentals very well and that we need to, as you said earlier, strongly work with hands. I mean, I cannot simply sit on my computer and just doing doesn't enable me anything greatness If I, any, because everything is changing. And for the innovation and transformation to happen, I should equally be skilled and competent. I mean, therefore, see, medical itself says competence-based. Everywhere accreditation today mandates that competence assessment also. So, and the key is design education for learning outcomes with built-in provision for assessment because that assessment the teacher has to do. If the teacher is not skilled to assess what all should be the learning outcome and how to assess it and in all its facet because there is no one shoe fit all. Yeah. It's very tough. So these are the transformational opportunities for once which gives us once again to become global leaders in knowledge creation, comprehension and dissemination besides being equally enabling our students to be I mean, employable or become helping them become innovators. I mean, uh, in whatever, I mean, whether it is in a job or making their own entrepreneurial venture. So I think new education policy is a boom provided we truly take it in the right spirit because it is on one side, it may look like it's a great, I mean, uh, menu card, but the menu card needs an appropriate recipe and the ingredients. So it and everything exists. But am I willing to look at around me and link them to make sure I deliver that great menu card? But that is a wonderful opportunity with the new education policy. And I'm very happy that say we have created all this provision in CV Raman Global University by default because of a 10 year ahead of the curve planning or looking at future skills. And now it's up to all of us to make vocational education also aspirational. So maybe these competitions and activities are the one where they first start getting excited because you will see that all our students who went into some of this competition, even one at national level have been acquired, I mean, have got great jobs. Mm -hmm. 
we were not good enough to excite them to go further to research and innovation and they got wonderful jobs so make the skilling and the contest as aspirational in the first level but as teachers bring them even the bigger picture of even higher aspirations of becoming entrepreneurs innovators researchers can we do them and that can only happen because the new education policy gives us a framework where even accreditation agencies will agencies will approve us even if we do those things and so it's an exciting time to be a teacher or an institutional head i presume yeah yes definitely sir thank you so much uh, for bringing out the essence of the new education policy and like you said i would just like to reiterate for the benefit of our audience there's a lot of unlearning and relearning that's needed to implement this education policy we might have to give away things and get out of the comfort zone zone also i think and take it forward so thanks again sir for giving us your time today uh, and uh, we look forward to be in touch with you thank you no uh, it's a pleasure and as you rightly said even education four point was his ability to learn unlearn and relearn or similarly skilling upskilling reskilling and unskilling all of them have to together happen and so that and it needs to happen with a nimbleness and uh, but then it's a great opportunity maybe the next 5 to 10 years is one of the most exciting times to be in a domain to be truly i mean leaf frogging and that if that leaf frogging is enabled through education and skill the country can truly become not just 5 10 trillion or even 20 trillion economy with atmanirbharta but if we miss the bus everything goes off and therefore it is very critical that we all understand and that's why the government has also linked skilling and education all together so that it happens seamlessly and thanks again for having me hopefully i have said something which is useful to the people who are listening yes, of course we learned a lot thank you sir we would be in touch with you thank you bye